Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to episode two of Grow Connections with PA4H, hosted by the Pennsylvania 4-H State Council. We as a council created this to bring a little more sunshine into your day. As 4-Hers, we grow together. And one of the most important things we are taught is the power of speaking. Speaking up, speaking out, and speaking loud. Just gaining the confidence to speak for ourselves in general is crucial. Growing connections with each other requires a great deal of communication. And that is one of the reasons why speaking is so important. What does the word speak mean? Here's how we broke it down as a council. Last episode, we talked about S for success or the act of achieving a goal. This episode, we will be highlighting P. P is perseverance or the persistence in doing something despite difficulty in delay or achieving success. We will also be highlighting E for eagerness. This is the enthusiasm to do or to have something, keenness. Now we will be moving on to some updates from across the state. We would like to thank our first responders for their continued support of our communities. Join us, Pennsylvania 4-H, in writing handmade cards to be distributed to your local police, firefighters, and medical response teams. For more information, visit the Penn State Extension website. After watching our show, Pull out your pen and paper and write a thank you to your local first responders. We are so grateful for all that they do in our communities. Check out the Penn State Extension website to keep up to date on the latest projects and opportunities through 4-H. Also stay up to date on all council activities by checking out the council corner. Continue to work hard on your projects. The PA4H Council wants to remind you to keep working hard on your 4-H projects this year and always strive to make the best better. 4-H at home activities are still available. Check these exciting activities out on the Penn State Extension website. Finally, stay up to date on the latest 4-H information on our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Penn State Extension website. Now it is time to introduce our very special guests, the Arkansas, Florida, and Texas 4-H state officers. Welcome all. We would like you guys to introduce yourselves, tell us what state you're from, the position held on your respective team, and the projects you do. We will hand it over to Arkansas, followed by Texas, then Florida. Hello, my name is Faith Fritch. I am from Arkansas, and I am the president of our state officer team. My main project is arts and humanities with a focus on performing arts. My other projects are shooting sports, animal science, and leadership. Hey, hey, my name is Sarah Dean. I'm from Franklin County in Arkansas. I am the Arkansas 4-H state reporter, and my main project is arts and humanities, but I also have food and nutrition, leadership, and health and fitness projects. Howdy, my name is Luke Reed, and I'm from Central Texas. I'm currently serving as the president of the Texas 4-H State Council. In 4-H, I participate in livestock and leadership projects. Hello guys, my name is Cameron Jones and I am from Texas. I am currently serving as the vice president. My main 4-H project is dog care and training. I also participate in STEM, consumer education, and leadership. Hi everyone, my name is Hayden Hawes and I'm the Florida 4-H State Council vice president. Um, some of my projects include livestock, archery, as well as citizenship and leadership. Hi everyone, my name is Ella and I am the Florida 4-H State Council Secretary. Some of my main projects are communication and leisure arts and I also do um, citizenship and leadership. It's so great to meet you all and we're so happy you got to join us today. Now, what we'd like to know, what is something interesting about your state or where you're from? So a fun little fact about Arkansas is we are the home of the only active diamond mine. And a fact about specifically where I live, which is in the northwest corner of Arkansas, we are the home of Walmart. It started in a in the town called Bentonville. That is a fun fact about from where I am. Arkansas contains over 600,000 acres of lakes and 9,700 miles of streams and rivers, which are all absolutely drop dead gorgeous. We are an outdoor lover's paradise. A fun fact about the part of Texas where I'm from is that I live 30 minutes from the largest army base in the United States and quite possibly the world known as Fort Hood. And sometimes you can even feel the explosions shake my house. 
I live really close to a Texas town called San Angelo, which used to not only be the wool and mohair capital of the nation, but also the entire world. So now to commemorate that, we have these sheep statues throughout the town that are all painted by local artists and they're to represent our history. I would also like to add, um, Texas loves football and my school has Friday night football every night. And then a big tradition for students is to go to Whataburger after the game. That obviously looks a little different this year, but Whataburger is a fast food burger place in Texas that high schoolers and adults love. So a fun fact about Florida, a lot of you probably know Florida is known as the sunshine state. And we have a lot of tourists and everybody come here for our beaches. And Florida actually has 663 miles of beaches. That's, that's I think, a pretty cool fact. And so this little fun fact about Florida and specifically our 4-H program, um, it's pretty general, but we really have a lot of regional variants. And by that, I mean a lot of different project areas, depending on where you're at. So and we have a lot of rural counties. And in those counties, a lot of the projects are livestock and things of that nature. We also have a lot of, I guess, urban counties um, and very I guess counties that are really not very agricultural. And so the recognition of 4-H is in some of those urban counties, a lot of people look at the 4-H program and think that all we do is service learning and things like that. And in urban counties, you might think it's a lot of livestock and not so much service learning and other projects. So I guess a fun fact is that we're such a diverse state that between, you know, I guess, depending on wherever you are in our state, there's a lot of different recognition of the 4-H program and what our program does. And we definitely do a lot of different projects, especially depending on where you are in the state. Those are some awesome facts. I definitely did not know a lot of those things. It's great to hear a little bit more about where you guys are from. Moving on to the next question. Does your 4-H program have any unique traditions or projects you'd like to tell us about? A unique project that Arkansas 4-H has is, is archaeology. It was started by one of our uh, state staff, and it's actually one of our more recent. Um, a tradition that we have in Arkansas 4-H is at every event that we have a dance. The last dance, we play the dance by Garth Brooks. And sometimes we will just kind of stand in a circle and sing the song at the top of our lungs while it's playing, or we'll actually have the final dance. And then after it's done, we'll just go and get in a circle and we will kind of get and just start shouting the chorus at the top of our lungs. And it's kind of a way to celebrate those that are aging out because we'll have like a smaller circle in the middle. Singing as a downtime entertainment would have to be probably my favorite for Arkansas 4 H tradition. Um, we do it all the way from the local level to the state level. So we'll um, sing at day camps when we don't have anything to do. We'll sing at um, TLC when we don't have anything to do or our state contests, like everything. We always sing and it's so much fun. One very unique thing about Texas 4-H is our Texas 4-H ambassador programs. We have ambassador programs that range from livestock to food and nutrition, all the way to clothing and textiles. So personally, I'm a livestock ambassador. So what this or program does is it uh, teaches kids to advocate for agriculture and exposes them to agriculture on a not only a state level, but a world level because there's trip, trips to California and Australia offered through this program. The second ambassador program that I'm a part of is the water ambassador program. And this program teaches students about the water industry and how vital water is to everyday life. I am also an ambassador for Texas. I am a Texas 4-H STEM ambassador. For those of you who don't know, STEM is an acronym that stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Our STEM ambassador team works throughout the year to advocate for those topics throughout the state within 4-H and also outside of 4-H. We also do these extensive newscasts during Texas 4-H Roundup and Texas 4-H Congress. So throughout the day, we'll go around to the different competitions and the happenings of the event and interview participants. And then we edit the videos and put them together to show at assemblies later in the night. So a unique program that the Florida 4-H program has is called our executive board. And there's 13 4-H districts throughout Florida. And for our executive board, it's really a group of about anywhere between 70 to 90 youth who work together to plan a lot of our state 4-H events, activities, and service learning project initiatives. So we have, again, as I said, the 13 districts, and there are appointed and elected representatives from each district um, that serve on executive board. And really, our youth plan a lot of our statewide events, like our, um, and I know Ella is going to speak a little bit about another event as well but we've got a ton of different events, um, service learning projects, activities, and initiatives that are all planned by our youth with incredible adult advisors on our executive board. 
Yeah, so like Hayden was saying, one of my favorite things that we do in Florida 4-H that I think is pretty unique um, is actually an event, and it's called Florida 4-H Legislature. Um, it's my favorite Florida 4-H event that we do. I, I love it so much. And um, basically what we do is we go, it's a week-long event, and youth from all over the state, senior level 4-H members, so that's about high school age. Um, we go to Tallahassee, which is the capital of Florida, um, and we actually have you know mock legislative sessions over that whole week. So it's a really good way way for um, 4-Hers to learn about how legislature works. We assign all of them roles, either they're a representative or a senator or whatever that is. And I also really love that that event is very youth-led. Like Hayden was saying, at executive board, we have different committees for all of our state events. I'm actually the chair of that committee this year. Um, and so my committee and I get to plan that event for this whole year. And then, you know, we have a really big part in that event when it comes around. It sounds like you guys have some super amazing programs and traditions in your state. Um, I know we're all super excited to learn about all of that, and I'm sure your 4 hers absolutely love them. So our next question that we have for you guys is, how have you persevered throughout your 4-H career, especially in this past year leading up to your state officer position? When it comes to perseverance, for me, a lot of the perseverance came from when I was a older junior. Uh, I was definitely had a lot of problems with competitions and I was always kind of beaten down personally by myself because I, I could never place high enough in my opinion, because I definitely overthink everything. And so throughout my 4-H journey, I've had to learn that it's okay to accept loss because, and because it's not exactly a loss. It's just learning and trying and uh, keeping on trying at your goals. And the best way that I have persevered throughout my 4-H journey is from the people around me, the people who are supportive of me. Because if I was on my own, it's super easy to just give up, not try again. But when you have people that support you and you're surrounded by supportive people, they will tell you to get back up again, try again. And that's honestly the best way that I know how to, to persevere through everything. Uh, when it comes to this past year running for state officer position, I the biggest perseverance that I had to go through was it was hard for me because I was a previous uh, candidate from the year prior. And that year we were able to go around and we were able to meet the people and we were able to just converse and get personal with the people and the delegates who were going to elect us into office. But this year, we didn't have that opportunity. Uh, the closest we had was a question and answers, a Zoom session during our team leader conference, but it still didn't feel like personal. And that was just the biggest thing for me was that it was just, but I kind of had to push through it and be like, it's gonna be okay. We're gonna get back to normal soon. So for me, um, I have had like lots of really random physical problems happen, especially around my contest times. Um, and like, I've had to push through and like do speeches when I was super sick. Um, and last year, 2019, not like, you know, further back in 2020, but um, I tore a tendon in my ankle and I didn't know it was wrong. I just knew it hurt. So my mom has always taught me to wear heels at formal events because you need to look proper. And so I walked and did this whole event, like an entire evening in heels networking. And I was hurting so bad, but I, I persevered and I pushed through and I made it. Um, and because of that, I made like I have a lot of connections now and a lot of um, the foragers in my county look up to me just because I, I took the time to talk to them. So I'm glad that I um, pushed through that. And then with dealing with all the craziness of 2020, um, I think the biggest way I've persevered is just like staying involved. Um, I, I have had a very extreme year. I um, had a fainting disorder, like come and just start. I started fainting um, about in March, so like right when Corona was becoming a big deal. So I had a lot of um, 
trouble just staying mentally present and so all the virtual things like I fell asleep through so many of them but keeping up with deadlines and um like making sure I was doing what all the events and contests that I, I could um physically manage was um pretty difficult but I managed it because I love 4 and I was going to keep it no matter what the few in-person events that actually happened were also really difficult for me to get through without passing out. Um, I was so weak, um, but I didn't want to miss out on all the awesome things that I could have, so I managed it and we'll just keep going and keep persevering. So I'll give you all a little background story. As a third grader, I had a big fear of public speaking. And it took every nerve in my body to read the monthly treasures report to my club of about 75 members. But over time, 4-H has taught me to persevere and overcome this fear of public speaking by constantly pushing me out of my comfort zone. For, and for that, I'm forever grateful. Now, 2020 has brought a bunch of challenge for all of us. And for me personally, I was actually in the show ring at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo when they said, oh, we got to cancel. So that uh, it's really cool to see how the livestock industry here in Texas has rebounded from COVID-19 because we were able to have a successful State Fair of Texas just last week. Wow, perseverance. That is a big word. Um, through everything you do, there's going to be challenges, and I've definitely faced my array of challenges through 4-H and just my daily life, um, especially this last year. But to me, perseverance is about supporting each other. I've realized a lot, especially this summer, that I have a tendency to be kind of independent and telling myself, like, strength is being able to do stuff on your own. But I have learned that real strength comes in teams. 4-H more than anything has given me a family of support to keep me motivated and encouraged when there's things not going on in person. And through online, my fellow 4-Hers have really inspired me, I guess. And it's awesome to have that connection with people who are just as motivated as you. And I feel like that is something that has helped me persevere and will definitely help me throughout my entire future. Um, I think having a team support and connecting with people and especially just allowing people to help you when you need it and helping them when you have the ability to is what perseverance means. So what has really allowed me to be able to persevere through my time in 4-H and, you know, just stay involved in the 4-H program, I think it's just that 4-H has a lot of opportunities for me to do things that I'm passionate about, the things that I'm interested in, maybe even outside of the 4-H program. 4-H has given me an avenue and an outlet to do that. And that's that's really what has has made me be able to stay in the 4-H program. I know as, as people get older, there's a lot more to do now that I'm in high school. I have a lot more to do than I did when I was five years old when I first started in 4-H. But I know 4-H, I've always been able to make that a priority. And it's 4-H has always been so important to me. It's been important to me that no matter what has to go away, I mean, I really want 4-H to stay. And I, I've really tried to make that a priority. And I think specifically for 2020, just like everybody else has been talking about, it was kind of difficult to want to stay excited about the 4-H program when everything, at least in Florida, kind of went to virtual for a really long time. And I know I'm personally not always the greatest about being enthusiastic about sitting in front of a computer screen for just hours at a time. But I think we've done a really good job and we've seen that it's possible to, you know, still have great events through Zoom. It's not the same. And we are obviously hoping that as soon as possible, we can go back to in-person events. But I have still been able, I've been able to see my friends, which is another huge part of the 4-H program and still make new connections through Zoom, which I think is really cool. You know, perseverance, perseverance wise, you know, throughout my full 4-H career, I've always seen all the amazing things that us 4-Hers do and watch all my peers take on these incredible leadership roles um, on the state council, on our district and county, and even at the club level. And so always seeing all those leadership skills that were being developed and all the good that we could do through our communities um, with service learning projects and activities, that always motivated me. And I always found that um, I always wanted to take every opportunity because I knew that every opportunity I would take um, would really benefit me or someone else in the long run, especially through the 4-H program. So I made sure to take all those opportunities and do as much good for the communities I could 
Um, I really tried to persevere on a personal level throughout my entire 4-H career. Now, leading up to 2020 and getting elected as the state council vice president for Florida, um, COVID hit. I think it was probably February or March when it became an issue and we really had to start canceling events. And so we had a lot of state 4-H events. I know Ella touched a little bit on it that many of them were in-person, normal events that we had, and we had to switch everything to virtual. And ultimately, a lot of our in-person week-long events and camps, turning them virtual was definitely a challenge and something that was kind of mind-boggling. You know, how are we going to do this? So a lot of our executive board youth and 4-H youth, our state officer team and different um, staff and faculty came together and re we really put our heads together to find out how we can still continue to offer incredible programming to our 4-H members in a virtual aspect. Um, so we had some 4-H adventures, we call them, online webinars, interactive webinars that we hosted. Our intermediate state event, which was normally in person, we turned into a virtual intermediate summer experience, we called for younger 4-H members to learn about the state program and our 4-H legislature learning about bills. And I could go on about so many different events that we held that we had to switch to being virtual, but we really made sure that, you know, we really tackled the problem head on. And though, and we really persevered through the entire thing. We knew that although it's definitely a problem and we're not able to accomplish everything we normally could in person, we also had a new audience that we could reach. People who weren't, wouldn't be able to normally attend 4-H events in person due to transportation issues or different things like that. So really being able to look at the bright side and the positive side of things, the chance that we could touch a new audience and really reach out to others who may have never been in the 4-H program before. Although there was a lot of dis disadvantages to virtual events, we saw the bonding that was possible. We saw all the lives that we could touch and it really gave us that motivation and gave me personally a lot of motiv motivation going into 2020 and being at a new say officer team and say officer year. Um, I knew that we could do a lot and how we were able to work together, come together as our heads as 4-Hers and make an impact and know how we can, I guess, accomplish our goals and tasks in a virtual world. Um, that was really motiva motivating and gave us that opportunity to persevere. What amazing stories about perseverance. 4-H definitely always teaches us to make that best better. On a different note, how has 4-H prepared you for your future? The way that 4-H has prepared me for the future is it has helped me to, uh, it has taught me how to be an act in like the attire I need for a formal setting. It has taught me about leadership, what it takes to be a good leader. Um, personally, my view of a leader is a person who can who can take charge and lead, but also knows how to step back and let other people lead and have that opportunity. Um, another thing is it teaches me about commitment. Being a state officer is a commitment. And if somebody says, be here, I'll try my best to be there. Um, it teaches me about responsibility. I have to be responsible for my daily life because people look at us 4 Hers and like there's an image. And so we try to uphold it. Um, and it also has just taught me to reach your goals, no matter how many times you fail or how many times you have to get up and try again, just as long as you do try up again, just keep on reaching for your goals. So 4 H has taught me all of the leadership skills that I possess. It's taken me from being a painfully shy kid to being a capable young adult. Um, 4-H has also taught me tons of life skills like budgeting and public speaking, networking, cooking and making healthy meal plans, interior design, stress management and relaxation. Um, but probably the most important thing that 4-H has taught me is the ability to say no. In 4-H, we have so many opportunities, and sometimes it can get a little overwhelming, but um, it's very good in, to be able to manage your time and what you do. And so I've learned how to do that, and it's going to really help me in college and beyond. The 4-H program in general has taught me so many essential life skills that will help me later on in life, whether it be livestock through uh, a responsibility, you have a live animal that you have to care for, or time management, you need to know how to divide up your time between 4-H, school, and if you play sports, you got church on Sunday. It's really taught me how to manage my time in the proper manner. But uh, why I'm such a big fan of our ambassador programs is it exposes high school age kids to uh, industries and jobs from uh, a wide, wide range of industries. And for me specifically, the Water Ambassador Program introduced me into the uh, career that I want to pursue in the future, which is water law. So that's why I'm a big fan of our Water Ambassador and 
ambassador programs in general? I can honestly say that I can't imagine the person I would be without this organization. 4-H has prepared me with all the skills to be the leader or the follower that society needs. Um, I'm going to kind of relate this back to head, heart, hands, and health. 4-H has taught me how to love fearlessly, how to think strategically, and I feel like the most importantly, how to serve others endlessly. And so to make the sacrifices and contribute whatever I can to help other people and other communities and the world. And so I, and I'm sure every other state officer here could probably sit here for probably about an hour and talk about all the different skills that we've gained in the 4-H program. I think that's true for each and every one of us. Um, and every 4 h really across our entire program, I think we all gain a lot of life skills. I think for me personally, um, you know, some of the major things that stick out, of course, are leadership skills and the opportunity and the ability to go through 4-H has prepared me to serve as a leader, not only in my community, um, but in my country and my world, tying that into the 4-H pledge there. And I think that, you know, ultimately, another thing that 4-H has really taught me is how to be a good listener. And I, I find that through our 4-H committee meetings and things that we, we do, we can all be great leaders. Um, but being a good listener and listening to the needs and wants of our 4-H members and our those throughout our community, uh, I think is super, super important. It's something that I've really found that um, 4-H gives us the opportunity to learn and learn how to be a good listener. I think that tackling a lot of problems um, in our communities is always super important. And I think that's something that I've found that 4-H has really showed me. I've been able to see a lot of different things in the community that um, you know we can fix through service learning or community outreach programs, things that we can attempt to do good, do good for our communities. And I think that 4-H has really taught when you see an issue in, in your community, in your, you know, locally, in your, in your subdivision, wherever it might be, um, if you see an issue, as 4 hers we really learn and have learned that we can fix it or that we can do our very best to try to fix it um, and make an impact on our community, our country, our world. And so I think that, and, and tying that into our 4-H pledge, I think that that's really relevant in today's world with 2020 and all the issues that we're facing. Um, I think that 4-H has really helped prepare me by learning that or teaching me that you can never stop learning and you can never stop growing. Um, and we always have an opportunity to continue to learn and grow. And I think that as 4-Hers, um, that's something that we should always do. And I think that's something we always do. So with that, I'm going to close that out. Whenever people ask me what the 4-H program is, what is 4-H all about, I always make sure that in my explanation, I mention life skills. That's kind of what everybody's been talking about. But that's that's a big thing that 4-H has done for me. It has taught me a lot of life skills, a lot of things that I'm going to use. I've used in my time in the 4-H program, but I'm going to continue to use them as, as I'm done with the 4-H program, as I go on th with my life. Um, one of those skills, one of the really important ones that I've learned is public speaking. That's just, that's so important. And I know not a lot of people think about that necessarily, but you use public speaking pretty much any kind of job that you go into, you will need to have public speaking skills at some point. And that's something that a lot of people, I think that's one of people's top fears. People have done like studies on that is public speaking, but 4-H really focuses on that. That's one of my projects. And that's really helped me out a lot. Also, obviously, you know, leadership skills, you will need to use that in many areas of your life as well outside of the 4-H program. So those are just a couple of examples, but I, I'm confident. I'm not exactly sure. I tell people this all the time whenever people ask me, you know, what do you want to do after you're done with school? I'm not exactly sure yet, but I can tell them confidently that I know that 4-H has prepared me for whatever that is. Well, thank you guys for so much for sharing your stories and how 4-H has prepared you for your future. The final question that we have for you guys today is, do you have any final advice to share with the 4-Hers who are watching today? My advice is, we only have a limited time in this organization, so make the most of it. Dive all in, especially during these times, because we need to stay active and keep this organization alive and be there for our communities and our states. So just stay active and dive all in and never give up. So this piece of advice I'm passing down from my mom, don't let 4-H consume your life completely. Make sure you diversify, but also never give up on it. 4-H has a place for everyone, and it's a truly unique experience that will prepare you for life no matter what. When 4-H gets to be overwhelming, consider giving up a few events, but please, please do not give up on 4-H as a whole. You will not regret keeping it in your life. So I was recently on a Zoom at the State Fair of Texas Leadership Conference, and this is a conference with the Texas 4-H leadership team, the Texas FCCLA leadership team, 
and also our Texas FFA state officers. And our speaker challenged us to see adversity as an opportunity to make change. So today I'm just gonna extend that challenge to everyone uh, viewing this call today. So next time adversity uh, comes your way, whether it be in the form of a test you have to take, a race you have to run, or even more COVID-19 cancellations are moved on to virtual. I challenge you all to look at this, look at these in a positive light and try to see how it can have a positive impact on not only yourself, but how you can have a positive impact on others. My biggest advice to any of you watching is take risk. When you believe in something, do whatever it takes to pursue it. Be courageous and find other people who have your same passions so that together you can inspire each other and really fight for what you believe in. Um, during COVID, it's hard sometimes to find opportunities because it seems like things are getting canceled. But you should try your best to make your own opportunities and share those with others when you have a chance. One piece of advice that I have, I tell people this all the time, the only regret that I've ever had for going to a new 4-H event is that I didn't go to it sooner. So I, I just my advice is do everything while you can. Just like, just like Faith was saying earlier, you know, we only have a limited amount of time to do this stuff. So you should really go to every single event that you can. I don't think that you'll regret it. And also just, you know, make connections with people while you're there. Some of my friends that I've made in the 4-H program, I know are going to be friends for the rest of my life. I mean, 4-H is a really good place to make relationships. So take advantage of that in the time that you have. So my advice, and I'm going to keep it brief, is just that we all face challenges, especially in the year 2020. Um, so really just learn to overcome those challenges so that you can continue to learn by doing and really work to make the best better for not only yourself, but for those around you. Definitely learn. And I think that's something that we can all focus on this year is learning to overcome challenges. And when you learn to overcome any challenges that might come in your way, um, you can really learn to make that impact in your community, on yourself and those around you. Well, on behalf of the Pennsylvania 4-H State Council, I would like to thank you guys for joining us today and sharing a little bit about your 4-H story and your experience. I know we had a great time chatting with you and thank you so much for coming. Now it's riddle time. Last time I told you two riddles. The first one was, where can you find cities, towns, shops, streets, but no people? And the answer to that first riddle was a map. And the second riddle was, what do you find at the end of a line? The answer to the second riddle is the letter E. Now, for the new riddle for this week's episode is, only one color, but not one size, stuck at the bottom, yet easily flies. Present in the sun, but not in the rain. Do no harm and feeling no pain. What is it? Tune in to episode three to find out the answer. To our incredible guests from Arkansas, Florida, and Texas, thank you so much for sharing about your states and your own 4-H experiences. You've shown us firsthand how 4-H has helped you succeed and persevere with great eagerness. To our viewers, thank you for joining us. And remember to remain persistent even through hard times because there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Thanks for watching and see you next time on Grow Connections with PA4H.